Bending gravity is a premise that is so strong you can build entire game franchises on it. In Super Mario Galaxy you jump around collecting coins on tiny planets. In Psychonauts 2, twisting and turning the gravity allows for so much more detail in the non-Euclidean minds of the characters. And in No Man's Sky you can land anywhere and planets have a unique personality just conveyed through their sense of gravity alone. I believe that every 3D game developer should have the chance to play with gravity for their game, and so I'm going to expose their secrets. My name is Avorius, and I welcome you to my new series on gravity. Let's go into school mode for a second. Gravity is a force that pulls you towards the biggest clumps of nearby weight. Usually that's the planet you're standing on. In rare cases, it can also be a m If you have many different forces, they add up and the final vector is your experienced gravity. Gravity is relative to the inverse squared distance. With increasing distance, your attraction grows weaker. With decreasing distance, your attraction grows stronger. As world builders, we have three hammers we can apply to any rule. We can accept, defy, or change. If you want to make a good game, you should make fitting decisions for what you want to achieve. Let's look at some examples. Universe Sandbox does gravity exactly like the real world. And that makes sense. It aims to simulate reality and so it should be as accurate as possible. The creators of Kerbal Space Program made similar decisions. It is a game about wacky physics and space exploration and their math might not always check out exactly, but what changes they made made sense for the game. Other games do the exact opposite. Manifold Garden is a game that takes place in a fractal world. Gravity can change independently for every single actor. This is the case for a lot of puzzle games actually, including Aetherborn, Portal and Sky Beneath. I even used the same principles when I made a Minecraft mod called Gravity Craft, where you could walk on walls and ceilings. Axis aligned gravity directions is pretty common for these games and that makes sense, because it allows for very precise controls and prevents stuff like sliding around all over the floor. What's much more interesting to me though is the hybrids and so I'm going to check that out. I found three rules you can change to manipulate gravity for your game and make it more fitting for your gameplay design. Here they are. The summation of forces, the fall off, and the distance function. Most games where you control a character very quickly drop the summation of forces. That means that only one well of gravity can affect your gameplay. This is important because if you are stuck between two gravity wells, it might just as easily happen that you will not move at all and that makes for a pretty awkward situation. So what you want to do is keep track of the current main gravity well and whenever you enter the bounding box of another gravity well, it flips over to that instantly. Alright, so that was the summation of forces. Let's talk about the falloff next. For that, I've simulated a small little world here with a nondescript gender person floating around. And the easiest thing that some games do is just not having a falloff at all. So for example, in Super Mario Galaxy, the strength of the gravity is simply just X, some constant. Looks like this. And again, many games where you play one character should really think about doing this. Because it just makes the whole equations very simple and very predictable. You have a lot of control over your character and just don't float around in space randomly. Of course, the first thing that many people would think with a falloff is linear falloff. So if you wanted a falloff, you could go for that. It's a little bit weird though, because if we zoom out, we can see that at some point we start to get some negative gravity. So everything in the universe is currently accelerating away from the planet at rapid speed. So let's quickly fix that with a max to zero. And there we go. Of course, you can apply really any function to the distance. So we could go for a sine wave maybe, although that really doesn't make a lot of sense. So <laughs> let's go with the physical approach for now. In the real world, I mentioned before, we have the inverse square distance. And if we try that, well, we don't really get a lot of strength. So let's pump that up a little bit. We want the strength 
at the surface of the planet to be strong enough to pull the person down. That worked pretty well. Although if we zoom out now, we can see that the gravity extends quite far. And there's a problem because if we had a second world here, like in Super Mario Galaxy, then the gravities of the two planets would probably cancel out again, more or less. You would get some really strange effects. So what we really want to do is also decrease the gravity at the surface of the other planet so that the two gravity influences don't really interfere. So let's pump it down a little bit again. And that kind of worked, but now we have the problem again that the gravity isn't strong enough at the surface of the planet. So this kind of equation doesn't really give us enough creative freedom over the gravity strength. I've come up with a different solution though which is that we kind of orient ourselves with the absolute gravity strength we've seen in games like Super Mario Galaxy. But after that, we get a normal physical falloff. So we define an inner border where the gravity strength is constant, and we define an outer border where the gravity strength is half, which is the way that most of these physical kinds of equations are set up with a starting point and a half falloff point. Unfortunately, if you try to figure out A and B for this equation, you generate a whole bunch of math. But that's fine, because I used my incredible high school math knowledge to solve for them, and we can really just focus on the solution. Alright, so let's plug those numbers in, and I think that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a weird thing going on in the center of the sphere, not that we care much, but we can get rid of that with some min-maxing. And yeah, if we have a second planet now, the gravity doesn't really interfere much, and still we get a lot of control over the character in the sphere of the planet. I think that's a pretty good middle ground. You may have noticed that so far we've only really looked at simple and boring spheres and their gravity, which only really attracts towards the center. In professional games, they have much more interesting world design. So in Super Mario Galaxy, again, you can see worlds that are shaped like pills or like snakes, maybe, and like dice. And really what that comes down to is the distance function. So imagine you've got a pill or a capsule-shaped planet like this. If we simply use the same mechanism and pull the player towards the center of the pill, then the directions get pretty awkward because at the sides of this planet, you will get pulled towards the middle and you will sort of slide off the edges. Instead, what we want is a function that pulls the player towards the closest point on the surface. Luckily, functions that are pretty similar to this already exist, so we can look up some repository like this, and there's tons of functions for tons of different objects. And we just need to find the one we are looking for, which in this case is a capsule or line, I guess. And we'll just adapt it to our purposes. So rather than simply returning the distance to the object, we'll return a vector 3 for the surface position, and we can also rename the function already. And we just need to change the return value to the location on the line plus the adjusted difference to the player times the radius of the capsule. And that's pretty much it. That's exactly the function that we need already. Here's another one. Can you guess which sort of primitive object this belongs to? And it's a donut! Anyway, that's pretty much everything that we need for complex gravity in games. We've gone over the summation of forces and why it makes sense to sometimes forego it entirely, even though it's realistic to add it in. You know about the falloff and how to reason about which function to use for your specific game type. And I've told you about the difference functions and how to create one for your primitive objects so that you're always pulled towards the closest point on the object surface. Join me in the next video where we'll implement all this in an actual game engine. But until then, this has been Avorius, signing off. <laughs>